So this section talks about finding the zeros of a polynomial. And up until now, we have taken some sort of polynomial function. And it's either been given to me in its factored form already, or we took the expanded polynomial, plugged it into the calculator, and found the zeros off the x-axis, right? OK, well, we're going to try to figure out how to take a polynomial and put it in its factored form. But before we do that, let's talk about all of the kinds of zeros that you could find in a polynomial. First, we have the traditional rationals, which are, we are used to seeing when we factor, like a trinomial, right, when we factor. We have these irrational zeros, which we can occur whenever we factor using the quadratic formula. And then finally, we have imaginary roots or complex imaginary roots. These are the roots that don't show up when I graph something, but we know that they could possibly potentially be there on any type of polynomial. What we're going to focus on first are how do I find, how do I take a polynomial and find its rational zeros, these right here. Well, we have the rational zero theorem, which is right here in the center. And it's going to give us some sort of tool that we can use to begin breaking up a polynomial function into its uh, rash into its factors. Okay, so rather formally, it's given to you right here. We're going to take the idea that we can uh, use this ratio of p over q to then determine its possible roots. All of that is kind of hard to understand unless we actually just focus on an example here. So the first one I want to look at, or the one we're going to look at in this video says, I want to list all the possible rational zeros. These are the ones that we see. We can graph physically on a graph. All the rational zeros of the function x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 6. And we're going to use that rational zero theorem, which tells us that i got to come up with some strange p over q ratio. Well, what's p and what's q? When you look at your polynomial and it's written in its descending order, the last term here is going to be p. And the first coefficient, or the coefficient of my leading term here, which let me circle that a little differently, the coefficient of my leading term, which is a 1, is going to be q. So the way that we begin is I'm going to come here and I'm going to first list all the factors of p, which is 6 all of the factors of 6. Well, that's a plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 6. These are the factors of 6, and you do the plus or minus of uh, plus or minuses of them as well. The next step is what are the factors of q? Well, q is the number 1, so its factors are simply plus or minus 1. And now we're going to write the ratio p over q. So I take all of my p terms and write them over all of my q terms. Well, that's all of these terms written over the number 1, which is simply just all of those p terms. So plus or minus 1, 2, 3, and 6. These, in fact, there's, what, four numbers and a plus or minus for each of them, so there are eight possible factors that we might have for this function. Remember, eight possible zeros that we can have for this polynomial function. And in fact, if I were to pull up the graph of that function, let me make this so that you can see it. If I were to pull up the graph of that function, you can see here that I have zeros occurring at negative 3, negative 1, and positive 2. And those are part of this list, which is just a list of possible rational zeros for my function. And that's all we're doing in this particular section, or this video, I should say. 